When she first came in, it was honestly really hard to fully appreciate the extent and the depth of all of her wounds. You know, I mean, she was, you know, dehydrated and, and, you know, a little on the anemic side, which was to be expected. You know, the time where we really kind of got a full extent of how bad her, her burns were was when we actually debrided her for the, for the first time. Um, we had actually delayed it to see if the hyperbaric oxygen treatments would, you know, revascularize some of the tissue and they did, thank God. Um, but the first time we literally got a, got a look at her was when we put her under anesthesia and were able to, to clip everything. And then we really got an idea of how extensive and how deep um, everything was. I mean, there was places that were all the way down to her, to the muscle bellies them, themselves, um, down past the, the fascia and everything. So it's, it's truly a miracle that she survived the fire and then survived the burns afterwards, you know, because you get past the initial, you know, systemic response to the actual fire, you know, with smoke inhalation and, and all that. Um, and, you know, then, and then you're left with the wound. So then you have a whole second, you know, phase of, of systemic response um, just during that, you know, the, the treatment of the, of the wounds themselves. I was heartbroken. First, I was actually shocked that she was alive. Um, usually dogs that have as extensive injuries as her were, I typically don't make it through the, the fire. And then all of the concurrent injuries, smoke inhalation, um, just kind of overall systemic inflammation, I was literally blown away that she was still alive. The fact that she was still alive five days after the incident, you know, told me that she wanted to live. So we got right on board and did everything that we could possibly do to, to get her to recover. It was definitely touch and go for a pretty long time, um, but she was in it to win it. So we were there to support her through everything. When Sadie came to us um, for the hyperbaric treatments, the Humane Society of Louisiana had a, a press release um, saying that, you know, what had happened to her and the treatment plan that we had with the hyperbarics to be able to offer um, that to her. And it ended up being where one of the news personalities, Meg Ferris, I believe, reached out to the human burn surgeon um, who did a lot of um, treatments with Resell. And he was able to get the company to donate one of the kits for Sadie to see if they could, if we could perform the treatment on her. And then he um, had Nicole, Dr. Nicole Kapari come up and actually perform the resale treatment. So it was kind of a weird, you know, chain of events to, to get her the resale treatment. But um, I think it was about a week after we'd gotten her up here was when she actually had the, the treatment performed um, on her. Um, Nicole Kapari is the, the director of the Pediatric Burn Unit at University Children's Hospital um, on the South Shore and um, she um, has a lot of experience with resale and burns in general so she was the one that was willing to come up and perform the treatment um, on her and she also helped um, debride some of the wounds as well. Um, so she kind of helped on multiple levels and then she just kept coming up <laughs> with, 
up here with bandage materials and just, just kind of keeping an eye on her to see, you know, kind of how she was doing. She knew from experience with people how much, you know, Sadie was going through, especially with the extensiveness of her wounds. And I think when she kind of saw Sadie rally and, and survive, you know, everybody kind of got behind her because it was so miraculous that she she was able to do what she did, which was survive. She had two surgical debridements. Um, the first one, we did the majority of getting the SR off and, um, you know, a pretty good amount of the dead tissue. And then the following day was when we finished um, as much, you know, getting off as much unhealthy tissue as we could. And that's when she had the, the recell treatment. So she was placed under anesthesia just twice um, in the beginning for, you know, to get the initial SR and dead tissue and everything off of her. Um, and then afterwards, we ended up using um, bandaging techniques to be able to get off whatever tissue that we weren't able to get off the first time to try to avoid having to put her under anesthesia again um, because one um, just kind of physically between surviving the fire and then trying to just survive the wounds um, and with her being heartworm positive the least amount of anesthetic episodes that we could put her under um, would decrease her her risk of you know not making through the surgical procedures themselves or anesthesia.